Game exclusivity is bad for gamers. Some of you are already mad at me, and I haven't even called out your favorite mega corporation yet. Well, keep your pitchforks out because I have a lot of hot takes incoming. I'm tired of video game releases being sliced up like Chuck E. Cheese pizza. You need a PS5 to play Returnal, an Xbox to play Forza Horizon 5, a Nintendo Switch to play Astral Chain, and a PC to play strategy games. For most people, it doesn't make sense to buy an entire $500 console just to play a few exclusive games. Fortunately, the PC, PS5, and Xbox series consoles all share a large library of multi-platform releases, which constantly the vast majority of new games released each year. This is good because it means regardless of what platform you're on, you don't have to miss out on great games. Unfortunately, first party titles by Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo are often held as console exclusives, meaning that you can't play God of War on Xbox and you can't experience the joy of the Halo Master Chief Collection on PlayStation. This is greatly frustrating to me. I personally play games on PC and on the Switch because those two platforms cover the most ground for the genres I'm interested in. Thankfully, Microsoft Microsoft releases their games on both Xbox and Windows, so I don't miss out on great titles there. But Sony is a different story. In my case, there are only a few games that I really want to play on PlayStation, like Ghost of Tsushima and the upcoming God of War Ragnarok, which makes it extremely difficult for me to justify the purchase of a PS5, because there are only about 5 exclusives I would like to play at this point. The logical course of action then, is for me to never play these games so long as they're PlayStation only, which is unfortunate because from everything I see, they are phenomenal experiences. I have to give Sony praise where it's do though. In the last couple of years, they've been porting some of their best games, including God of War 2018 and Spider-Man Remastered to PC. This is definitely a step in the right direction, though the fact that these ports are 2-4 to four years behind their initial releases and still aren't on Xbox means there's room to improve. Next up is Xbox. While there are less blockbuster hits on Microsoft's console, titles like Sea of Thieves, Forza, and Microsoft Flight Simulator are unique experiences that can't be found anywhere else. I mean, Sea of Thieves claims to have had 30 million million players to date, and they even have the GOAT Captain Jack Sparrow in the game. Sadly, players on Nintendo or PlayStation platforms can't participate in these adventures. While these games are important as system sellers, their impact lessens significantly over time. Two years on from the release of the excellent Forza Horizon 5, the game doesn't have the pulling power it used to. For instance, I'm a big fan of From Software's games, but the Demon's Souls remake on PS5 doesn't interest me enough anymore to want to buy the console, though I might have if it were in stock back in 2020. After a certain amount of time, say 1-2 to two years, exclusives should be released on other platforms because they've already done the majority of the work they will ever do for their home platform. People that really want to play Horizon Forbidden West aren't likely to wait the 3 years it will take to show up on PC. They'll go for the PS5 and buy the game day one. As for Nintendo, they're sort of a special case, but I'm not going to let them get away with it either. They want their platform to exist outside the rest of the gaming industry, and have proven more than a couple times that they are horribly out of touch with the modern gamer. The Nintendo Switch doesn't receive many of the third-party multi-platform titles like Assassin's Creed or Red Dead Redemption because, frankly, it can't run those games. A few developers have managed to make miracle ports of their games, like id Software's Doom Eternal for example, but these are few and far between. Nintendo may be lacking in AAA third-party games, but they make up for this by having the most exclusives of any platform by far. Zelda, Mario, Bayonetta, Xenoblade, Pokemon, Metroid, Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem, Pikmin, Star Fox, Kirby, Smash Brothers, you get the point. Nintendo is able to hold their special place in the market through an overwhelming quantity of quality exclusives. Now I don't play many of these games, but I can't deny the beautiful polish and superior feeling that every first party Nintendo game has. While they don't still use their famous Nintendo seal of approval, you still have that guarantee when you buy one of their games that it will be excellent. However, it would still benefit the industry as a whole if Nintendo decided to port their games to other platforms after a timed exclusivity. Can you imagine how many copies Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would sell if it were a cross-platform game, or how good Breath of the Wild would look on a next-gen console. I don't see Nintendo's exclusivity being as bad as the others, because their platform has a relatively low cost of entry with the Switch Lite, and they don't get most AAA third-party games to make them competitive, but I still dislike the practice of permanent exclusivity. I'd like to add in one tiny section for the PC market. There are untold numbers of games released on Steam that aren't available on console. This happens for a number of reasons, including the Steam Early Access feature, 
the wide open nature of the market on PC as opposed to the more locked down console eShops, and the console maker's desire to maintain a certain brand image. One other thing to note is that traditionally, strategy games like Total War would be a nightmare to control on consoles, but that is changing with mouse and keyboard support on newer consoles. I hope that we'll see more of these great games be multi-platform in the future, because everyone should have the chance to play them regardless of where they play games. Exclusivity is necessary for companies to sell consoles, which I understand, but games do not hold the same kind of marketing power years down the line from their initial release. It would be better for everyone if exclusives were made available on all platforms after a reasonable period of time to exclusivity. More people would have access to awesome games, which would in turn help developers build an even greater fan base and give us even better games in the future. I hope this won't be as much of an issue going forward, especially with many companies finding a common ground on the PC platform, but it would be best for all games to be available everywhere eventually. As always, time will tell.